Hey guys, it's Greg from BitGoblin again, and today I'm going to show you all how to create a local backup server using only this. A Raspberry Pi 4 with your typical loadout of accessories, a simple USB external hard drive, and using the rsync tool to actually copy the files. To be clear, right off the bat, this won't be the fastest backup system since we are limited with the USB hard drive and, to a lesser extent, the gigabit networking on the Pi. Nor will it be the most reliable since, amongst other reasons, USB hard drives and the SD card that we're booting off of really are not the most durable storage devices and could obviously take down your server when they die, but it's still a good solution that's relatively inexpensive and a great way to get started with backups if you're light on cash and like playing around with pies. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. Now before we get started, let's talk about why you would want something like this. Hopefully by now you all know that it's super important to back up your data, but in case you don't, it's really a story for another time, but the gist of it is that you never know when your storage devices are going to die. Or you do something stupid like deleting a file that you did not intend to, or you simply get hacked and your stuff gets encrypted until you pay a ransom to get it back, you know, ransomware. And whatever may happen, having backups of some sort will let you recover from those instances much more easily and give you some peace of mind in the meantime. Now, as for the hardware that you need for backups, you don't really need to spend a ton of money on a backup server. You could get one of those super large storage arrays and populate it with like 24 or 48 drives and then set it up with a bunch of redundancy. But if you don't have that much money and don't really want to worry about investing that much effort into something like that, you can easily get started with something like this. All we'll be using today hardware-wise is the aforementioned Raspberry Pi 4 with your usual kit of accessories like the case, power supply, SD card, all that jazz a USB hard drive, for which the model and size really don't matter so much as long as you have enough storage for all your backups, and then plus you'll also want an ethernet cable to connect to your network. So now that that's all out of the way, let's get to the tutorial. First thing you need to do is create your bootable SD card with your OS of choice. Today we'll be using Raspberry Pi OS Lite, which is based off of Debian, but you can use anything else that supports the ARM64 architecture of the Raspberry Pi. Other operating systems include uh, like Red Hat Family, where you have Fedora and Alma Linux, which both have ARM64 images, OpenSUSE, Arch Linux, and so many others. But like I said, today we're going to go with Raspberry Pi OS, since that's what I'm familiar with. I'm also going to be going with the Lite version to save resources on the Pi, since I really don't need a GUI to manage it, but if you would prefer to have a GUI on there, you can do that if you want. Since we're going with Raspberry Pi OS, I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi Imager to create the bootable SD card. Um, it's available for pretty much any operating system that you want to use. But so we'll do choose OS, I'm going to go Raspberry Pi OS Other, and then choose Lite. Then we're going to go to Storage, we're going to go to the multi-reader, which is my SD card, then click Write. This is just a confirmation that we know that the SD card will be erased. Enter your password, and then it's gonna create the SD card. This might take a few minutes, so I'll check back in when it's done. Cool, so now the SD card has been created, and before we go put this in the Pi, let's just go click continue and close out of this. Then I'm gonna go down to the KDE storage notifier, go to boot, open with file manager, move the window over to this monitor, and all we're gonna do in the boot partition is just create a new text file, and then for the name, just enter SSH. And that's all we need. All this does is it tells the OS to start SSH on boot so we don't have to worry about connecting like a monitor or keyboard to get that started. So now we can just eject the SD card and put it in our Pi. So at this point, the next step is to simply build your Pi if you have not done so already. You can build it with a case, insert your SD card, plug in your drive, connect it to your network with an ethernet cable, and then finally find a power outlet to plug it in with. Now just give it a minute to boot up, resize the root partition to match your SD card size, and eventually the OS will be ready for you to log in. All right, now that the Pi is up and running, we're gonna head on over to the terminal so we can SSH into it. You can find the IP address if your Pi likely from your firewall or router or wherever your DHCP server is hosted, but I already know that mine is 10.7.20.135. So what we're gonna do command-wise is run SSH space Pi at the IP address of your server. Hit enter, accept the new SSH key, and then type in the default password, which is Raspberry, and boom, we're into the Pi. Once we're in, the first thing we need to do is set up our drive with a file system. We're going to use the ButterFS file system since it gives us the ability to take snapshots of the drive if we want, and it gives us the option to expand our storage in the future. I'm not sure what the current status uh, is for ButterFS RAID 5 and 6. I know they were a bit squirrely in the past, 
but at least the RAID 1 mirror is safe to use, which is a great way to help protect your backups in the event that one drive dies. We need to install the ButterFS support for ROS, so to do that, we just run sudo apt install btrfs-progs. Give it a sec to do its thing. Enter Y when prompted. And there we go, the ButterFS has been installed. Now to actually create the file system, let's just run a sudo fdisk-l. And we're gonna look through this output to find our external USB hard drive. In this case, the path is dev SDA. You can, we can tell by the five terabyte hard drive. So now to actually create the file system, we just need to run sudo make fs.btrfs, then dash capital L, or it's gonna call this my backups and then slash dev slash SDA or whatever the path to your disk is. Hit enter. Oh, this is another thing. If you have a disk like I do that already has a file system on it, MakeFS is kind of smart. And if you find another file system, it will kind of fail. But all we have to do is just add a dash lowercase f at the end of it to force it. And it should create the, the ButterFS file system. Cool. So the file system has been created and we now need a spot to mount it. My general convention is to follow the Linux file system hierarchy guidelines and put my services data under slash SRV. So let's just create a directory like sudo make dir mkdir to be clear slash SRV slash backups. The name of the directory can be whatever you want. Just change backups to whatever you call it uh, in later steps. Hit enter. Our directory is being created and we can check that with ls slash SRV and we see backups is there. Now we could mount the file system by running a simple mount command like mount dash tbtrfs dev sda and then serve backups, but we want this mount to persist across reboots. So to do that, we'll just do a sudo block ID or blk ID. Then we're going to go for the dev sda line and then grab the uuid line or parameter. I'm just going to copy that. And then we're going to go into the Etsy FS tab file. So sudo vim Etsy, Etsy FS tab. Vim is not installed. Give me one moment. All right, sorry about that. So let's just do sudo vim slash Etsy slash FS tab. And then at the bottom of this file, we're gonna add a new line to mount the disk. The syntax for this file is pretty simple. There are only six parameters. So the first we need to do is just paste in the our partition UUID that we grabbed from the block ID command. Then we're gonna put in the path where we're gonna mount it, slash serve slash backups, type of file system, which is btrfs tab. And then now we're gonna add any mount options, which for this one, we don't really need any options. So we can just add defaults, throw them with the default mount options, and then zero, tab zero. We're gonna save and quit the file. And then to actually mount it, now we can just run a sudo mount dash lowercase a. And then if we run a df-h command, we will see that dev sda has been mounted at serve slash backups. Finally, we can go over to our machine that we want to back up. This right here is my transcode server that has access to all my video files that I want to back up to this uh, external hard drive. It already has the rsync tool installed because it's a part of my baselines applied through salt, but you can install it with a simple sudo apt install rsync. Hit enter and do all the usual uh, apt install stuff. Now running an rsync copy is as simple as running rsync dash avh dash dash progress. The path that you want to back up in this case, it's uh, at SRV slash bitgoblin. And then we're going to do pi at the IP address of your server. Again, minus 10.7.20.135. Then colon, the colon's important. And then the path where you want to place the backups on the remote system. So it's going to be slash SRV slash backups. The AVH flags for rsync are A is for archive, which basically tells rsync to preserve everything like symlinks, file owner and group, permissions, and all that other fun stuff. V is for verbose, which just shows us everything that's happening while rsync is running. It's not exactly required. And then H is for human readable format, which converts all output and numbers to something more easily readable, like 10 gigabytes, two terabytes, that kind of thing. And then the dash dash progress flag just shows us the progress of each file transfer as, as it's happening. So at this point, we can just hit enter, uh, type in yes to accept the new SSH key, type in the remote user password. So it's just Raspberry because we haven't changed it yet. Oop, that's actually one thing we need to do before we run the rsync command. So back on our Raspberry Pi uh, backup server, what we need to do is just run sudo chone 
pi slash SRV slash backups. This makes the uh, pi user the owner of that backup folder. So now we can go back to the system that we want to back up and then run that rsync command again. Type in the remote user password. And then as we can see, it's starting to copy all the files over to that drive. Now, while this is running, just to double check it, we can head back over to our pi, uh, go to slash serve slash backups. And in here, we can see that the bitgoblin folder is here. And then if we do ls bitgoblin, we can see that, you know, we have my three channels and then, you know, some backups from my mom and then some other software. So that this is great. Everything is backing up and it's going to take a while because it has two and a half terabytes that it has to copy, but you know, I'm not going to make you wait for all that. So cool. At this point, we'll want to add the rsync job to our cron dab to run it periodically. So everything is automatically backed up on a periodic basis and then create and copy over an SSH key to allow for automatic logins over SSH. But that's beyond the scope of this video. All right, so if you follow this tutorial, you should now have a very simple backup server to copy files to using rsync, but there are some changes that you can make to iterate on this and improve upon it. First, like I hinted at earlier, you can add another USB hard drive or two to this and convert the ButterFS file system into a mirror or a RAID 5 array without losing any data. This makes it really easy to expand upon when you get more drives to you know, expand the array or add some redundancy to help protect your data in the event of a drive failure. Though again, I would double check the status of ButterFS RAID 5 implementation and make sure it actually works and doesn't just write garbage to your drive like it did in the past. This also admittedly isn't the most user-friendly experience since there really isn't any slick interface to use and the backups will simply be running via rsync on the command line. This really isn't tricky, but if you'd rather have a GUI app to set up and manage your backups, you can export the serve slash backups directory over NFS, mount it on your workstation or whatever you want to backup, and use a tool like Deja Dupe to set up and keep track of your backups on that mount point. You still need to dig into the CLI for the setup of the file system and NFS mount, but at least you don't need to return to it while managing your backups in the future. I would also highly recommend, if your data is super important, to use a tool like rclone to back up your backups to a cloud storage solution like Backblaze or Google Drive, so that you have a third copy of your data between your live data, local backup on the Pi, and your cloud storage. But also it's an offsite copy in the event of like a house fire or an earthquake that takes out your entire home network. You can get by just fine without this, especially since cloud storage can be a little expensive at times and even unlimited backup solutions like Backblaze B2 for $7 a month have their limits. But it's still something to look into to have extra protection when catastrophe strikes. So to wrap it up now, really this isn't a novel idea since it's really just piecing together some well-known software with some low-cost hardware to create a decent-ish solution. But that's going to do it for this one, and now I'm curious to know what your guys' thoughts are on this like cheap and easy backup server made from simply a Raspberry Pi and a USB hard drive. Maybe you thought it was a terrible idea or you do something similarly cool in your network for backups. So be sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you disliked the video, then you know what to do. But if you did like it, then go hit that like button and also get subscribed and hit the bell icon so you can keep up with my latest videos and show your support. I've also got a Discord server if you'd like to join the community and just chat and hang out with us there. And if you need it, there are several channels to get help. As always, I hope you all have a great day and I will catch you in the next one.